Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And as the title suggests, Unity 6 is out of its beta period and moving into its preview. And today I'm going to run you through their brand new blog post. And it's got a load of technical details on the preview release of Unity 6. And it really focuses on performance optimization and being able to add a load more features to URP and HDRP. So you can check the blog out below. I'll leave the links, but I'll sum everything up for you so you're fully prepared. So before, it would have been known as Unity 2023.3 TechStream, but it will be now known as Unity 6 Preview. It worked just like their previous TechStream releases, and they do still recommend that if you're doing any major projects, to use their LTS version, which is Unity 2022 LTS, because it's got the best level of stability and support in there. And the Unity 6 Preview does focus, like I said, on URP and HDRP, and it has significant improvements to increase your performance across platforms. And you, depending on the content and the type of things that you're going to create, you can reduce CPU load by around 30 to 50 percent to create smoother faster and more efficient rendering so the first one but they have gpu resident draw which allows you to render larger bigger worlds without the actual need for manual optimizations so you can save up to 50 percent on cpu frame time reduction for game objects even high-end mobile devices Working alongside that is a GPU occlusion culling, which boosts performance for game objects, reducing the amount of overdraw for each frame, which means that rendering is not wasting any resources when it draws things that aren't actually seen by the camera. You can further optimize performance with GPU performance enhancements with the spatial temporal post-processing, which is designed to take frames rendered at lower resolution and upscale those without any loss of quality. It allows to increase performance across all resolutions and it's featured in URP, HDRP and all notable devices and even compute capable mobile devices too. Unity have added in a brand new feature called the Render Graph which is a new rendering framework and API which you'll be able to modify yourself that simplifies maintenance extendabilities of render pipelines and improves the performance across the board such as automatic merging, the creation of native render passes, and this is a good way to reduce memory usage and decrease energy consumption. And this allows you to streamline the whole process so you can actually take away and customize and look at where you need to debug and optimize, especially where your passes are used. While you're here, support me and the channel and get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects on my Patreon. And there's a massive list in the description too. The next one in their API is the foveated rendering API which does improve GPU performance significantly at the reduction of fidelity around the user's mid and far peripheral vision. This is specific to XR and VR platforms and blurs the edge and doesn't allow as much to be rendered in the very outside of your vision when it's not as important, it's more in the very center. They did mention about volume framework enhancements in both URP and HDRP to optimize CPU performance on all platforms to make it viable on low and hardware too. And this allows you to set up global and per quality level volumes in URP, similar to what was possible in HDRP with an improved user interface. And it's now easier to use custom post-processing effects and build those with your own effects like custom fog and other things like that, which Unity showed off in December. Specific lighting enhancements is the Adaptive Pro Volumes, which provide a new way to build global illumination and has new possibilities to do time and day scenarios and different streaming capabilities. So with the preview, it does have improved authoring workflows, expanded on streaming capabilities and extended control and platform reach. They've extended on their APV scenario blending in URP to enable a wider range of platform support and blend between a baked pro volume data for day and night transitions or when you need to switch lights on and off in rooms. They do have an APV sky occlusion, which is supported across both pipelines there. And this enables you to apply a day and night scenario to environments to create more color variations for static indirect lighting from the sky compared to the blending scenario. Then the disk streaming now supports a non-compute path in URP, which enables you to support asset bundles and addressables. Now there's a new probe adjustment volume tool, which allows you to fine tune the adaptive probe volumes to fix light leak situations and adjustments to make the volumes and overrides easy to understand. 
And finally, for lighting, they've got this C Sharp Light Probe Baking API. This enables you to control how many probes a baker at a time to balance execution time and memory usage. And they do have a full example on GitHub, which can show you how they've utilized the API to make this happen. Looking at high fidelity environments and things that supported across the board in HDRP, they've improved sky rendering to be able to take time and day and sunrise, add its own ozone layer support, atmospheric scattering, and distant fog at large distances. There is now underwater volumetric fog that samples acoustics to create volumetric light shafts and various optimizations to save on the GPU and the CPU as well, and new screen space effects when rendering surfaces like water together with terrain and vegetation, along with speed tree vegetation rendering improvements, which do leverage the GPU resident draw. There's brand new workflows for visual effects graph and artist workflows, so there's brand new profiling tools to be able to look at the performance and to be able to tweak specific aspects. There's brand new support for shader graph keywords and URP depth and color buffers for fast collision and spawning particles in the world. You can take a look at the learning templates on the visual effects graph to learn about concepts and features if you're looking to get into that. There's brand new shader graph workflows, which include keyboard shortcuts and a heat map color mode, which you can see which is the most GPU intensive node to be able to ease easily more optimize everything in your graph. There's a new node reference samples containing a set of shader graphs, assets, along with a new tutorial sample for checking that out too. Now onto the side of multi-platform enhancements and building out, there's a brand new Unity build window to be able to create build profiles. So you can manage builds much more easily and you can create unique profiles for say multiple different platforms to customize exactly what the content will be in each build and to be able to make those unique. If you need something for console to be different, have a different set of scenes, you can have that. And there'll be a brand new override for player settings with any of the profiles that you create. So you could customize the settings on an individual basis. And then they're actually adding in a brand new platform browser so you know what platforms Unity supports and you can choose to create builds for all those platforms without sometimes not knowing where you could possibly build to. For their mobile offerings, the Android and iOS is now browser supported so you can now run your Unity games anywhere on the web without limiting your browser games to desktop based application. You can even now embed your games in a web view, just more like a native app and to have its own shortcut and offline functionality. There will be early access to web GPUs backend, which will be a way to accelerate GPU performance across the games that access web and so it allows you to use compute shader support, different APIs and things for DirectX 12, Vulkan, Metal or other desktop supported processes. There's going to be new support for ARM based window devices across this, DirectX 12 backend improvements, so users across the editor and players will be able to have increased performance with CPU by using the split graphics job solution and the gains will expand based on the complexity of your scene and the amount of draw calls that you have. And we've got many multiplayer feature enhancements to accelerate that with the experimental multiplayer creator, which will be available in the Unity package registry to act as a streamlined guidance tool designed to onboard people onto multiplayer when they haven't got the best idea on what to do. It will give you access to tools and services that Unity offers. You'll be able to take exactly what features you think are relevant in your game and change those on the fly when you need them as they move along. Brand new multiplayer play mode features, which allows you to test across multiple different separate processes without leaving the Unity editor. So you can simulate up to four players within the editor with, to be able to test and develop and run locally without having to give this to other people. There's a brand new multiplayer tools package, which adds network scene visualization specifically for debugging. So you can visualize and debug network communications on a per object basis. There's new experimental distributed authority for netcode and game objects, netcode for entity improvements, dedicated server package, which allows you to switch a project between the server and the client without the need to create another project or to be able to do that. And then experimental multiplayer services SDK, brand new multiplayer preview in Unity 6, and then entities and workflow enhancements for ECS and other workflows. And of course, with their AI offerings, I made a video about all the AI tools that are now in the Unity editor. So this won't be any different for Unity 6. So you can check out that video if you want to get that started. And Unity 6 preview does ship with Unity Centis 
with a brand new performance and a brand new getting started mod to be able to utilize those features for specific productivity needs and it comes with brand new profiling tools which includes a memory usage on disk and allocated memory distribution and these include things like to be able to see render textures and compute shaders and how they're being used and then specific reporting of resident memory in a more precise way for example when memory is swapped to disk and is no longer counted and for XR and other platforms, you need to do support the most popular XR platforms, including ARKit, AI Core, Vision OS, MetaQuest, PlayStation VR, and these are all in the Unity 6 preview. You'll find all cross-platform features like mixed reality, hand-to-eye input, improved visual fidelity, and many more features. And whether you want to expand your current game to mixed reality, you can use the AR Foundation, which will incorporate the physical world into different experiences, and you'll have added support with image stabilization, on the AR core and improved support for mixed reality platforms and so many more. The XR input has the integration of the XR toolkit 3.0 with a Neofire interactor with greater flexibility and modularity when customizing how interactors behave in your project and a new virtual keyboard sample giving you the ability to build and customize in-game keyboards in a cross-platform way. Brand new unique hand gestures which support with the Open XR hand gestures kit improve visual fidelity across the board with brand new composition layers so you can make text and UIs be able to be rendered much more clearly from a distance so you don't have this issue. You can check out the full blog post below with all the details that you need to know and I'll link some other videos showing about a more in-depth look of the Unity 6 core features but this is just a rundown of what's going to be in the preview. So you let me know down below what you think and check out all the links in the description because there's Unity sale now on and I keep you all up to date with what you need to know. So don't forget to check out my Patreon to get access to over 225 different scripts, assets and projects because it really helps me out, supports the channel. Big thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.